is organized by Uganda Advertising Association, and they are in partnership with Uganda Marketers Association. They just wanted to bring this to you and make sure that we are geared up for the Silverback Awards that are coming through. Yay! And um, a lot is going to be happening. Different presentations are going to come through. And guys, just keep watch, listen in as Pitesh takes us through every single thing that you need to um, just be the best agency in terms of submission. And um, why don't we get right into it, Pitesh? Just um, looking at last year, um, this is going to be the second year we are doing the awards. And of course, different agencies are excited. They are up and ready to just put in their campaigns and uh, get going. One thing we noticed with last year was that uh, the inaugural silver bar competition on the concern of the judges then was on the quality of submissions. Like um, the quality of the submissions wasn't as good as they expected it. How do you think uh, competitors gunning for this prestigious award package should package their submissions in the most compelling way? How do you think they can best package this? Yeah, so um, mostly one of the things we're going to be doing today is sharing some examples of ways you can package your work, things that you should be thinking about as you actually put that work together as well. So I think that question really is not one of those things that can be answered really quickly. It's one of those questions that will be answered uh, over the, the next few minutes as I go through the presentation. But maybe one of the things I do want to highlight is that, you know, when you look at the work and what's the purpose of the Silverback Awards, the Silverback Awards really exists to elevate the work, to ensure there's a pathway to creative excellence and that pipeline exists. In building that pipeline, you don't start off at a point where you necessarily look at it at this moment in time and you go, this is absolute excellence. It's a journey. It's a training. And I think that's what we're going to look at is what Silverback Awards is going to achieve is really elevating the creative work and elevating the access to information for for ordinary consumers in the market in which it serves. Right. Thank you. Yes, I really can't wait to get into this and just really properly break down on what people would need to just ace their submissions and come up with very award-winning uh, presentations. Please take us away. Absolutely. Also, I just want to say hello as well to uh, my colleague from the Louis, Nkuli Radebe, who's going to be joining us. So hi, Nkuli. Thanks for joining us and making time to be part of it. So just to give you a little bit of background, what's going to happen is once I've shared my thoughts and my thinking, Nkuli is going to take us through the website and give us, you know, just those little bit of additional uh, hints in terms of how you actually enter into the website itself. So the actual granular detail of that. Amazing. So with that in mind, I'd like to just go to my sharing works. Fantastic. So I'm going to take you through, you know, how to win at awards. You know, a lot of people out there, are, it's a simple question. That's the number one question goes, how do I win? And I figured let's give you the cheat sheet to tell you how you actually win in the best way possible by actually respecting the work. And that's what we're going to go through today. So one of the key things that I do want to also highlight is that as you go through your entry process, there are going to be times that you have queries, that things you need to have resolved. There is a dedicated uh, email address that's here to assist you. It's silverback at luris.com. If you have any queries, have any questions, there's anything that's troubling you, you need any guidance, please mail silverback at luris.com and we'll go through the process. Okay, amazing. So what is the first bit of advice that I can actually give you? And the first bit I can give you is, Think like a judge. When you're actually packaging the work, if you actually want to win, what you should be thinking about is how are the judges thinking? When the judges are looking at my work, what is the lens that they're going to be applying to it? And this is actually quite simple. I mean, there's three key areas that I want you to think about. One is innovation. That's what the judges are looking for. And if you think about maybe why there would have been criticisms in the past is, are you adequately demonstrating how your work is fresh and groundbreaking? How is it making a difference? How is it breaking away from the status quo and how everyone else is thinking and basically being able to say, I'm thinking different, my agency is thinking differently, my brand is thinking differently, and we're ensuring that what's being delivered to the end consumer is seen as fresh, groundbreaking, and innovative. Secondly is execution. This speaks to the craft. Is it well executed? Is it beautifully crafted? You know, when it comes to craft itself, there are times when we rush things along, timings are always a concern. 
But when it becomes an intrinsic part of, of who you are, of your agency and of the brand, you'll tend to find that craft becomes something that's really, really important. You think about the execution. You think about the way certain things are doing. You look at it and you let that annoy you when it's not being done correctly. So when you do things correctly and it's well-crafted, it's noticeable by everyone. So please think about the execution. And then uh, relevance. Is it well executed? Is it relevant to the brand, the market, and the medium? So the judges are going to obviously be looking at your work and they're going to be thinking, this work was created. We're in brand communication. Is this work created for brand in a way to actually ensure that it's delivering on the brand values? Can a consumer look at this and absolutely understand what this actually means in their life? So, and that takes to, is it relevant to the market? So the market is actually viewing this. Are they going to look at this and go, yes, this communication works for me. And then thirdly, is it relevant to the chosen medium? Sometimes we'll see examples where people create a TVC, you put it on television and you go, I've got this. Let me just take it and put it onto YouTube and it's on a digital environment. But something that works in 30 seconds does not work in a YouTube environment because the consumer is sitting there waiting for the skip button to pitch up so they can skip as soon as possible. So start thinking about this when you're actually showing this and showing your work. Is this done the way that the judge understands that if you're entering in a specific category, that the work was created for that category? It was specifically created for print. It was created for television or created for digital in a way when the consumer who's consuming media, media in that environment absolutely understands the benefit to them itself. So think about the relevance. So this is this is just three quick things you can think about. Innovation, execution, relevance to help you think like a judge. Next up, I want to go to six steps of winning. These are just six quick tips in terms of actually winning out there that we actually have. And this is adapted from, from the six steps to winning a Luri. So it's the same process that we would give anyone who wants to enter the Luri Awards. So number one, start with a great idea. You know, you can even look at it and go, we'll spend money on presenting this, packaging this, even if you know how to do this. But if you don't have a strong idea, if the overall idea in terms of what was created in order to tap into that consumer thinking was not strong enough, if it's not delivering the benefit to the brand, to the consumer in that chosen medium itself, then you can put all of the effort that you want uh, into the entry presentation and it's still not win. So make sure that your idea is, is the absolute hero in everything that you do and that you're highlighting how strong your idea is. So focus on the idea, idea, idea. Next step is to keep it simple. I know it always seems easy to, to put a lot of complex ideas into it, but simplicity is difficult as, as the famous saying goes. And because simplicity is so difficult, what we want to do is focus on the core message itself. You focus what was great, why it was relevant, and how you did it. And that's the important thing to just bear in mind. If you can just tell the judges why what you did was so great, how did it actually make a difference in the lives of the people that you're targeting and of the brands and how you actually went about doing it, this is something that the judges will immediately get. If you make it too complicated, mire it in jargon, or, or just try and use facts to try and baffle the judges, you will tend to find that your judges will be confused and will not get the proposition that you're putting forward. Step number three, don't create work with the sole purpose of winning an award. And again, this, I can't stress this enough. You know, Your work has to have purpose. You may think that you know, winning an award and having it on, on, on your mantle may be nice. But if there's no substance behind that award, if you did not actually put in the work to actually try and get the brand to buy, and if you didn't put in the work to actually get um, consumers to actually love the brand and the whole process, what is the value? Like, I mean, think about this, honestly, there's no value to that award itself. It's, it's hollow. So therefore, just remember, judges will see through work created for awards. And you can go about this and try and win awards with it, but you have to ask yourself, are you really, is that the substance that you want to have as a person just to have a whole award? So don't create work for the sole purpose of winning award. Take true commercial work that has a purpose, that is delivering benefits to consumers, delivering benefits to brands out there, and ultimately delivering benefits to even the agencies out there. This is the kind of work that we want to see through the Silverback Awards. Point number four, study the categories and know where to enter. Obviously, you have a challenge sometimes where there's a number of categories and you go, I don't know where to enter. And you may enter into the wrong categories. 
yet, you know, you've got all of this valuable information. Have a look at the previous winners who have come out from the Silverback Awards. Even look at the Luris archive. It's available at luris.com and have a look at some of the categories. And there's an immense amount of work that's been entered there. Understand the rules and enter accordingly. If you look at the categories and you apply your mind and wrestle with the idea in terms of where you want to enter, think about it, apply your mind and enter it into the right categories, you will ensure that the judges will appreciate the work in the category and ultimately you stand a better chance of winning. Number five, a bad presentation can lose you, could lose you the award. And it's true that, you know, we say you need to start off with an idea, but even if you have a great idea and if you don't articulate that idea, in your presentation. And if you don't actually share with the judges why it was so innovative, well executed and relevant, it won't win. What you're actually doing is through your case study and packaging it and through all of the work that you actually share with the judges over and above the work, you're translating that work from a piece of execution into something that the judges can absolutely understand why this piece of work exists. And sometimes if a judge looks at it and does not have the full context that you have access to, you may not be able to win. So please don't take it for granted that the judges who are looking at this may not have the full context. Give them the detail that they need to be able to adequately understand and award your work. Point number six, make your stats relevant. You know, one of the challenges we see in a lot of case studies sometimes, <clears throat> and excuse me as I lose my voice, a little bit of a cold. One of the challenges that we do see is that many presentations just go in this laundry list of things. So I'll go like, we garnered 50,000 new Facebook likes um, and, and we saw a sales increase. Now, obviously, sometimes you may have a case where, let's look at ice cream as an example. In summer, your sales naturally increase from winter. And somebody may do an ice cream campaign and go, look at our increase in summer. Yes, it would have increased anyway. How do you ensure that the stats that you actually put forward genuinely makes sense? How can you actually ensure that the judges can see that the work that you're doing is actually making a difference out there? So what you should do is ensure that you give the judges stats that are absolutely relevant, stats that make sense, and stats that absolutely prove that your work is making a difference. And you know, the judges shouldn't have to work very hard to try and figure out why your campaign is worthy of winning. It should be a case where it's just natural as you take them on the journey you give them the stats and they go, yes, I absolutely get why these stats make sense because the entire journey that I've been taken on through this entire case study proves that, that you know, there's been like absolutely great work being done. So those are your six that you need to keep in mind. There's a few other useful tips that I'd like to share as well. Number one, rules and eligibility. You know, it's on the website. So please make sure you read the rules and eligibility. Make sure that your work is eligible to enter and please refer to the entry rules document for more information. Very easy to download on the Silverback website itself. Spend time with that and understand it. If you don't follow the rules and eligibility, you're likely to get disqualified and you don't want to get disqualified just for, for a simple technicality. Next, don't include agency references in the entry. Now, one of the things is that we want to ensure that the work can be judged anonymously and in an unbiased way. But if you include references to, let's say, the agency who produced the work, you add bias into it. You ensure, you remove the anonymity that exists from this itself. So please, one of the things to bear in mind, don't include any agency references in the entry. Don't say, hey, my agency made this and this is my agency name. Focus purely on the work itself. You're winning on the ideas. You're winning on the work. You're not winning on your agency's reputation itself. So make no reference to the entering company at all. Obviously, the work's being done for a brand. So the brand has to be shown. And that cannot be taken away. So ensure the brand, speak about the brand, speak about the work. But don't speak about the agency who did the work. Next, include subtitles in non-English work. If you're entering any work, that has not been done in English, please make sure you include subtitles in the entry itself. You know, the judges come from a diverse background and they may not nece necessarily speak the language in the work, which means that if you don't include English, which is a good base language to have as a general language, if we don't include English subtitles, it means that your judges may not adequately understand your work. So please remember to include subtitles, makes such a big difference in getting people to properly understand your work itself. 
So let's go into crafting your case and giving you some key ideas in terms of how to actually craft your case that you put forward. One of the first things that I do want to highlight is that you need to adequately explain the issue that you're solving. Now, in the end of the day, any work we do exists purely because the brand experienced an issue and we are trying to actually go out and solve that brand issue as the brand communications industry. If you can't articulate the challenge, then it's unlikely that the judges are going to be, under, to be able to understand it. You need to articulate the challenge, highlight the problem that was being faced. And then when you properly understand the problem, then the judges can understand why you move on to the next step, which is explaining the solution that you devised. That's when you bring in the solution. Don't go straight into the solution. I've seen case studies where people go straight into, we've gone to thousands of schools and spoken to thousands of kids about the benefit of hand washing. But yes, why are you doing that? Have you probably explained that hand washing is a challenge? Lots of kids are not doing it that kids are getting sick. And if they're getting sick, they can't go into school and that impacts their education. That kind of information is relevant. Then you bring in the solution. The solution needs to be able to tackle all the in issues that you identified at the onset. So make sure that when you explain the, the, the solution, that you're highlighting how the solution is making a difference. You then need to spend more time on the solution. So it's not as easy as saying, hey, we went to a thousand schools and spoke to a thousand different children about hand washing, as an example. You need to explain how there was actually effort put in. There were classes that were actually done. The children were visited two times a month. There were samples left over, like really going into it and include the results were applicable. Speaking about the results, back up your claims with actual results. You know, why would a judge believe that you did all of this and delivered all of these results if you don't have the proof? So make sure you put the proof and make sure when you are putting the proof that you can put references where required. That's it. Four easy steps really in terms of crafting your case study. I'd love to be able to share some of those case studies with you right now. So hopefully you've all got your, your uh, speakers a little bit louder. Let's have a look at a quick case study as a start. In Kenya, one in four children suffers from chronic malnutrition. A significant reason being that young mothers living in media dark regions are unaware of the importance of breastfeeding and complementary feeding practices, crucial in the first 24 months of their child's development. To make a difference, we needed to think differently about how we might counter this issue. Introducing Lesso Lessons. These women have a tradition of carrying their babies on their backs in slings made of distinct, vividly patterned cloth wraps known as lessos. We turned these lessos into lessons in postnatal nutritional care. They have created three unique lessos, one for each of the three stages of postnatal care. Designs themselves draw influence from traditional prints and patterns to drive relevance and comprehension. Lesos have been distributed amongst thousands of mothers across villages and counties in a nationwide drive, supplemented with a short 20-minute training module where they were instructed on how to follow each leso. Leso Lessons has received widespread support from government bodies, private institutions, and the press alike. African cloth that has been used over the years. Bali, Nibora, Bate, Leso Lessons. Leso, Leso Lessons, Leso lessons, Leso lessons is data into design. Where pamphlets and handouts fail, the LESO succeed. It really has turned culture into an incentive, serving as a daily reminder for young mothers to raise healthier children. The initiative is now being scaled up to reach and educate mothers in media dark areas across East Africa. LESO Lessons Turning tradition into lessons in This could be quite a complicated uh, idea for a lot of people to understand who are outside the Kenyan market as an example. But because there's so much time, as you see, articulating the problem really upfront, introducing the solution, explaining how the solution was actually executed and how it makes a difference. And then also at the end, just giving you all of those stats and all of those good information to help you believe and show that this is making a difference. So that's a beautifully crafted case study. Ended up winning a Grand Prix at Lurie's last year. Let's have a look at another one. In Lebanon, 
is collapsing. The scale of the crisis for ordinary Lebanese people is evident everywhere you look. It is out of petrol, internet, electricity, food, medicine. The coming 2022 elections, however, provide a glimmer of hope in providing some stability. But the current government, in a bid to hold on to power, has been making excuses to delay elections. Excuses such as the lack of paper and ink to conduct elections. So to defend democracy, and Nahar, the newspaper of the people, decided to publish the country's much-awaited 2022 elections edition by not printing it. Instead, and Nahar donated the paper and ink from the unprinted edition to print voting ballots. Found at every newspaper distributor in Lebanon on February 2nd was an empty news rack with a message explaining our cause and a link to an online edition. Trucks delivered that day's entire supply of paper and ink to the government's printing associate. The non-existent issue went viral. We had sparked a movement which people joined to ensure that elections happen. Press, private and recycling companies also supported the movements. We will support this movement with all our resources. The elections have to happen on time. Even election candidates spoke up for the cause. And Nahar had revived hope amongst the Lebanese for true change to take place. With the unprinted edition, we didn't just save paper and ink. We saved democracy. As of now, the Lebanese elections are scheduled to go ahead as planned. And the government has stopped mentioning the shortage of paper and ink to print ballots. You notice how in both of these, how powerful the upfront execute the upfront explanation was of the problem. A decent amount of time was spent articulating the problem. If you don't understand the problem as a judge, you won't understand why the solution makes diff makes a difference. And then only after the problem is being explained is the solution being introduced, and the solution is introduced, and then explained how that solution has a knock on effect, knock on effect, knock on effect before being able to go into the results itself. Let me show you another example. This is the uh, last in this, and then I've got one more after this. Twenty twenty was extra. The national sentiment was overwhelmingly negative. Well, the COVID nineteen outbreak isn't showing any signs of easing down. The continent may lose up to twenty million jobs. That is until a documentary dropped on Netflix about a Cape Townian befriending an octopus. A new Netflix original documentary called My Octopus Teacher has received eight nominations for the Jackson Wild Media Award. A lot of people say an octopus is like an alien, but you realize that you are very similar. While everyone was talking about My Octopus Teacher, we decided to hijack the news and remind South Africa about the original majestic creature of the deep. End. And then I had this crazy idea. What happens if I just went every day? This unusual relationship has inspired a local comedian to create a spoof. And he calls his My Creepy Teacher. The hashtag My Creepy Teacher is a creepy crawly branded content piece that parodies My Octopus Teacher. Now this is for an for a, for automatic pool cleaner at the beginning of the summer season, so the timing is perfect. Uh, it's gone around the world, it's gone huge. There's this hilarious guy who has the same voice, looks like the same kitchen, he goes in his pool and tries to bond with the creepy crawl. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny stuff. The videos are really clocked up over 200,000 views in just under 10 hours. From concept to viral in 96 hours, more than 5 million views. Zero paid media, combined press and social media reach 2 billion people. 20% increase in product demand from pool department buyers countrywide. So in the early part of my career, I spent a long time with this pool guy. He's fantastic. I'll give you his number. So, yeah, so this, this is just a want. nice, funny example that just, again, this and the next one just shows you not everything has to be so serious as well so the first two are quite serious this just shows you an example of where 
you know, the problem is really just trying to push sales and how they're able to latch onto the zeitgeist. So also what's problem, what's also useful is if there are things happening and your campaign is really latching onto something that's happening in the zeitgeist right now, this is a great case study that shows you how to latch onto. I'm not sure if anyone's actually watched the My Octopus Teacher, but if you've watched it, you'd understand why this case study makes makes such, it's, it's, it really parodies so, so perfectly as well and why it actually did so well. The other important thing I want to highlight is not all problems have to be big. Sometimes when we're actually doing our work, what we think about is these big problems. And when we're thinking about entering awards, such as the Silverback Awards, we think, have we done something super serious? Have we done something that's changing a nation? And sometimes all you need to do is solve the problems, the little ones as well. And sometimes it can be a problem of one person. Let me show you an example of, of a brand solving the problem of one person that did fantastically well that you could possibly also have as part of your entries if it's out there. Let's have a look. Brands spend big money on big views, big impressions, big talkability, big ideas that make a big impact on a big planet. So we also spend big brand bucks, but on something small, finding one guy love. Chicken Licken, along with their Love Me Tender Burger, is helping one South African find love. Meet Jamie, a 31-year-old from Soweto, who likes travel, gaming, and anime. I'm really looking for love. Using our entire marketing budget, we set out to find Jamie Love. We started with a TV commercial that advertised, well, Jamie, with cameos from friends and family. Everyone seemed to find love except Jamie. Online, those who know him best vouch for him. Uh, type that Jamie. Okay, banana was short and baba. Gahan. I said player, Lehanyan. Celebrities even endorsed Jamie on radio. My name is Happy Jelly. There's no love without happiness. You can find Jamie's love. It's easy, just like a Sunday morning. Everything we did led his future girlfriends to Tender, the dating app we created just for Jamie. Tomorrow, you'll be meeting the ladies on Facebook Live. Hi. I'm a little nervous. Hi. I'm Jamie. Hi. Hi, how are I'm you? I'm Jamie. My name is Jamie. Hi. Hi. Jamie's my name. Bye. Speed dates that turned into real dates. Like, I'm trying to charm this lady out here. You guys are a good person. And the results? Yeah, they were cool. But everyone only had one big question. Did Jamie find love? Yes. Yes, he did. And everyone got to meet her in a new ending to our ad. Jamie, are you glad you did this? Yeah, bruh. I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> this is my tender love. Yes! <laughs> because when it comes to chicken licking and love, when we do something small, we do it big. So that's love a great you, example to Jamie. show that sometimes you may look at your work and go, am I really going to enter this because it was so small? This was a, this is the smallest thing yet, finding love for just one person. Um, and the brand went through on that journey. So remember, no work is too small. Nothing that you've done is too small to enter into the Silverback Awards itself. All you really need to do is have a strong idea, follow all of the tips that we've shared so far. So I just want to wish you all the best of luck. Remember to enter today. Your work deserves the opportunity to be recognized and awarded by the industry. And that cannot be done if you do not enter. So, so get ready to enter, prepare it, use these tips. And I look forward to you seeing all of the amazing entries that come through. So good luck, everyone. Mercy, thank you wow. so much. I'm going to hand over back to you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ritesh. This was uh, quite eye-opening. And right there were tips that I feel like maybe some people might not have um, done in the previous awards. And right now, I'm going to concentrate on and make sure they do share with us um, award-winning tips. Guys, please do feel free. Share your questions into the chat box. We will have a moment where we'll read these questions. And also, if you would love to ask them directly, we will also be having that session. Um, after this, we're going to be, um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, Pritesh, and then we will have, um, you will take us through step-by-step step on uh, how to register. Yeah. 
So um, the first question, uh, yes, the first question would be at the Lord, you have interacted with several global um, prestigious awards. I'm sure of that. And um, just what are some of the key takeaways from handling these awards and how best can Ugandans, uh, sorry, can Ugandans build awards like the Silverbacks to a level where other countries yearn to participate mm -hmm. in these awards? Absolutely. I, I think the Silverbacks are already on a trajectory where, <clears throat> excuse me, over a period of time, lots of people are going to want to enter the Silverbacks. And it comes down to two important things, I think, really. You know, there's many others, but let's stick on two top level things. One is time. You obviously have to run a few editions. We need everyone to enter. So you run a few editions, the market enters, people see see just how great the Silverback Awards are from, from the entries and from the winners that come out. And the second is governance, ensuring that the governance in terms of how it's run is exceptionally, exceptionally strong. Um, therefore, I'm you know so honored to work with Frank and, and the entire team at the UAA because one of the things we can absolutely guarantee you is, is the governance levels are absolutely at the global standard for Silverback right now. And as we follow this, you know, go through time, everyone's seeing it and see the good governance that's been put behind the Silverback Awards. I guarantee you people from around the African continents and lots of the different places want to actually enter the Silverback Awards. Right, we do really want to take this a higher to a higher level so that we have different agencies competing for these awards and just putting out there all our best work. And uh, I do believe that guys are taking their notes and preparing themselves. Uh, the other question is, uh, from your experience, uh, what are some of the things that easily bias judges negatively during the during the first few minutes of interacting with an award submission? Yeah, I think one of the challenges that you know with judges uh, that we speak to our judges about, and we even train our judges on, is that all of us are biased in some way. You know, and and that's the first step of recognizing um, that we need to remove these biases in judging. So the first step is is awareness and mindfulness that we do have our inherent biases because we've all come through different lived experiences. And then ultimately what it is, is to have a sense of self-awareness to understand, you know, what are the lived experiences that I have that would have biased me in favor or against certain pieces of work. And what's great is the reason that we put in like really, really great experienced judges, as you'll see with the silverback judges as well, is that these judges have gone through judging at multiple levels in different areas and have been made aware of the inherent biases that they may have. So therefore, you know, it's it's not like a training ground. Well, Luris, I can tell you one of the things we do with the Luris being a walk rank toward, we're not a training ground. Judges have to go through a whole lot of process and we bring the same governance and thinking to ensure that even the Silverback Awards, that the judges are aware of their biases and these do not come out in any way in the way that they judge. All right. Um, I can see Aaron is saying the tips and case study and case studies are truly insightful and valuable. They really are appreciating what you're giving with that uh, to us. So um, I think we'll go into the next step of uh, carefully going through how to register. And uh, I think I'll use the opportunity to invite Nkuli and then you guys will take us through it. Thank you, Mercy. Nkuli. Okay, you. thank you, Mercy. Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. I'm just going to take you through very quickly um, how to enter on the site. So we're going to start off on the Silverback Awards main website, where you'll be able to see all of the categories. If you scroll down, you can see all of the categories that you're able to enter. And then once you've chosen the category you'd like to enter, you say see more. And then you are able to then hit submit, which will lead you to the entry site. Or you can just go straight into submit entry now, which will open up the entry site. Um, for a lot of you, you're going to have to register. So you're going to hit um, register here, or if it's a slightly different page, register will be on the top right hand corner next to the login button. You are then going to what? For registration, it's going to lead you to. Sorry, it's going to lead you to this page here. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, just just on the registration as Nkuli gets it as well. You register only once, 
So you register generally just to get your you know, email and password and just to have all your details on the system. So quick and easy, put in a few details, um, put in your details out there. The key purpose of the registration is so that we're able to contact you and we've got all of your details and all of this. We, we, you need to be able to contact the winner. So remember, if we win, we need to be able to contact you. This is a great way for us to have all of your details. Yes. So you'll be uh, led to a registration form where you fill in all of your company information, your contact details, etc. And then once you are happy with that information, you'll click accept terms and conditions, and then you'll hit submit where you will then be registered on the site. I've already registered, so I can just log in. And then on the next page, I'll be able to see all of the categories that are available for me to enter. So then we can choose a category to enter. It also shows you the cost of that particular category on the side. It will then show you the required media um, for this category, which is important for when you are uploading your media um, in the following steps. Uh, Things I'm just continue. Uh Oh, so sorry, Claire. And just to sorry. just to add on that as well, yeah. So so remember what happens is in some of the media that we put there as as a required media, this is the minimum requirement you need for judging, and therefore it's actually over there itself. So also familiarize yourself with what the required media is. Make sure you have that ready, and make sure you have it in the right format as well. Yes. So on the entry form, you'll be able to see exactly the category that you're entering, and then there's a short description of the category. You'll then have to fill in all of the entry information. So your entering com company, title, brand, et cetera. So I'm just gonna fill in some test names so we can move on to the next step. Uh, for the language, again, just to reiterate, it's important that any non-English entries do include English translations so that the judges, all of the judges um, can understand your work. And then you'll fill in, is it a charity or a public service? Yeah. And just to give you just some thoughts on this and why we have, whether it's a public or, or, or a charity. So, so what happens is it's always a lot easier to do work for a charity because, you know, as an agency, you may go, we're an agency, we're going to give away some of our time to a charity and we're going to do some work for the charity pro bono. This just helps us understand if, if it's pro bono work or paid work. So if you're doing work for public service or charity in any way, you know, please help us understand whether it was done in this case. And then you can either click no if it's a it's regular brand work, but if it's a charity and, and you, you know the various charities that are out there, it might be a church, might be a different religious organization. Um, it might be an organization that's promoting road safety or animal health. If it's that type of registered charity, please, you do need to declare it as a charity. And then you'll have to say work is flighted and complete. Um, for now, I'm going to select part of a campaign, no. And then it's very important for you to enter your description. Um, again, please do not include your agency name in the description. This will just allow you to give judges um, a little bit more insight into the piece of work and why it's met these uh, criteria on the side here uh, and give them a better understanding of your work. So you do want to fill that in. And then once you're happy with what you've completed, then you can say complete. And okay. then you can move that, on. Sorry, on that as well, Inkoli, before you move on, just on the entry description as well, I just want to highlight the importance of it. It's a very short description, only 350 words maximum. So it can be even short in that. Your key objective is this. You want to give a quick snippet to the judges to basically explain you know, what this work was, what was the intended purpose of the work, why it's making a difference, um, and, and how it's actually delivered on the judging criteria as well. This is a quick little snippet that the judges will be able to read and just try and understand why this work exists. So very important that you don't leave that blank. Just, just put something really short in that space. Yeah, perfect. And then you can carry on and enter your credits. Um, we're just going to put in some test ones. And then once you're happy with all of the credits that you've entered, you can say complete. Just another note, you are able to edit your credits a little bit later if you don't complete them at this step. And you are also able to go back to your description and edit that if you don't complete it in this first step. And then we can say save and continue. 
Right. And just on the credits as well, if you're just going to add, what's the purpose of the credits? Why do you need to have it? It's very simple. There are lots of people who work in a, any piece of communication. The credits uh, allow us to identify some of the key people who would have put in effort. If you're in a case where you find that somebody, you may not have a stylist as an example, please don't put in NA or put anything. Just leave it blank. Leave it totally, totally blank. Our system will recognize that that person was not, there was no one involved in that. So you don't necessarily have to go and fill in every single credit and try and figure out if I don't have a stylist, if I did not put a stylist in this, that's going to be an issue. Nope, no issues at all. Leave it blank, move on. But, you know, some of the key people, such as, you know, the brand representative, the chief creative officer, the uh, or the creative director who's out there, please make sure you put those. It's very useful for us to be able to attribute the work to individuals who are who are actually doing the work. Yes. Cool. And then on the on the next page, um, this is where you are going to attach the media um, to your entry. You'll see that when you first land on the page, uh, there's a red block that says you have not met the minimum requirement for this entry. Um, that just lets you know that you haven't uploaded the media just yet. Um, and then, that will go away once you've met the media requirements. Um, so then you can check required media on this tab. It'll let you know exactly what you need to upload. Um, and then you hit link and remove media. So once you're on this page, then you can see Oh, sorry. Did we just lose Inkuli there for a, for a little second as well? Um, so Inkuli should be back wait. in a in a minute or so. Um, network issues, always one of those challenges. You never know when they're going to hit as well. So I don't have access to this page. But maybe while while we're waiting for Inkuli to just, just get back online, just a, a very quick thing in terms of your media requirements as well. What's really nice is the system's really intuitive. This is how you need to think of, of the Luri system. Think of it as going shopping. You're going shopping, right? So if you go shopping, you're going to buy different items. So you may decide to buy some biscuits. You may decide to buy, here we go, and Kuli should pop back any second now. You may decide to buy some biscuits. You may decide to buy some bread. You may decide to buy some rice. And then you then go to the till at the end and you check out with it. The system works exactly the same. And essentially what you're actually going out there and doing is, uh, as Inkuli was going to show you right now, is that you then choose the work that you're going to enter. And you might say, I'm going to film category. And you, then you connect the media for judging. You may say, I'm going to enter print. You connect the media for judging. And you just literally just are connecting different products that you actually want before you go to the checkout stage. I'm just gonna quickly check. Um, I've just got, I'm sure I'll get a little message on my phone when Inkuli will be able to join us as well. Um, but maybe, here we go. Hi Inkuli, are you back? Welcome back Inkuli. Apologies, apologies. We're having internet troubles here. <laughs> my apologies right. for that. Yes. Um, Welcome. So yeah, we can go back to, to, to having a look at the media. Yes, please. Yes, please. Can everyone see my screen? Absolutely. Yep. We okay. Can. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, we are uploading media. Um. So here again, it'll remind, it'll constantly remind you of the requirements. Um. Otherwise, the entry won't be viable if you don't meet the exact requirements. Then we can upload the files. So we just say add files, or you can drag them. But I'm just going to say add files for now. Um. I've ensured that my media meets the specs, so I know that I can upload. And then once we've reached this stage, it'll ask you to select type. You will select JPEG for judging. If it's a JPEG, um, you will not need these other two options. It'll have to be JPEG for judging. If it's a video, you'll either select original content or overview video, depending on what you are uploading. So we know exactly what is being judged. And then you say start upload, and then it will upload fairly quickly. And then we, you'll get a confirmation that your media is uploaded successfully. And then we go back to manage media. So you'll see that once you've uploaded several things, um, you'll be able to see all of them in your media manager. And then the ones that are grayed out, it just means that they are not required for that particular category. So in this case, uh, we can see that only videos are required. So only videos will be available to select to attach to this particular entry. So uh, to select entries, 
you just click the yellow checkbox on the top right of that particular piece and then you say update entry that will attach it to your entry and then you'll be able to see it okay we need to you'll be able to see it um, here. And then as you can see, this says overview video um, and the required is an original content. So that's why that is still red, but we'll just carry on with that um, for now. So the system is very intuitive. It, it, it basically holds your hand throughout the process. So if it says, you know, you need an overview video, It'll it'll basically you mark it as an overview video and it'll tell you, look, your overview video is there, but you may be missing other pieces. So the key thing is to go out and test it. You know, you've got to play with it. Like with any new experience in life, you need to spend a little time just to familiarize yourself with it. But just a reminder, silverback at luris.com is the email address that you need to know. So if you have any issues and you you're confused about anything. Mel Silverback at Louis.com and one of the team members will be able to get in touch with you and be able to assist you through the process. But essentially what Inkuli is, is essentially doing right now is, as I said, it's a shopping basket. You've got all of your media that you've uploaded that's sitting there. And even if you have a case study that you go, look, this case study is relevant to my film entry and is relevant to my digital entry, you don't need to upload it twice. It's uploaded once. All you're doing is just linking it. So you're just telling the system that these two are connected. And as you go through the process, it's very intuitive. This is this is how every global award does it. So the great thing is you're also learning on this process about how to enter global awards as well. And Kuli, back to you. Yes, as thank you. you. Thinking, uh, just something just came up. So if um, there was an area where there was you could either put in work in progress or flighted work. So would someone or would an agency have an opportunity to put in work that is currently in progress? It might not have been flighted already, but it is in progress. So would it be okay to submit that work? Uh, I need to check. So I will check that with the rules and with Frank. I'm not sure if Frank's in the chat and if we can give us some guidance on that. Generally, what happens is it's, uh, you know, in different contexts, uh, sometimes you're allowed to put work that is work in progress. Um, what I would recommend is you need results for, for the Silverback Awards and you don't have results for work in progress. So if you don't have the results, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to prove that that work is actually making a difference. So my recommendation is put work in that has actually aired because the rules of the, of the Silverback Awards are the work must have aired. So you need to have work that's aired and where results exist to be able to enter the Silverback Awards. So yes, at this point, you, as far as the best manager, you cannot work into work in progress. All right. Yes, and Kuli, please do carry on. It's okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so once you've successfully uploaded your media, you'll be able to see all of the details of your entry. Um, and then you'll be able to also move the media um, either up or down and just change the order that you want the judges to see it in. So you can move it down, you can move it up. Once you're happy with that, then you can set, you can check complete and then we will save and continue. And then you'll be led to your dashboard. Your dashboard is where you'll be able to see every single one of your entries. You can enter multiple different categories and they will all show up on your dashboard um, if anything is incomplete you'll see it'll be highlighted in red um, underneath each of the columns and you'll know exactly what you still need to update so in this case I still need to update my linked media and it's very important also that you upload an entry confirmation form you'll find that by clicking on the unconfirmed link, and then it will lead you to this page where you can access an entry confirmation form. This needs to be signed by your CEO or your ECD or CCO. And this is just confirmation that you have permission to enter the work into the awards. And it looks something like this. And then- just, Yeah, just to add, this is part of good governance as well. You know, this also ensures that the work is going in that you're never going to have a situation where an agency enters work and the brand is shocked or a brand enters work and the agency is shocked that my work is now appearing at the silverback. So this is just good governance 
And it's something that's really useful for you to do on all your entries. Yes, and you only need to upload it once. So once you've signed it, you'll upload it once, and then it will apply to all of your entries. And then the next step you'll go to is that once you are happy that you've completed all of these and all of these are green, you will then check out your entries. This will generate an invoice for your entries. Now, even though you've entered multiple different categories, if you select all of them, it will generate a single invoice and you can make a single payment for every single entry, despite them being in different categories. So we can select each entry and then we can hit check out. You can also check out before these are completed. You are able to come back and edit them um, even though you have checked out. Checking out is just going to generate an invoice and then you'll be able to make payment. Um, so we're going to check out all of those entries. We'll say next. We'll confirm and submit. And then you will be led to this page where you have two payment options. You can pay via EFT, all of the banking details are there, or you can pay now. Paying now, you can click here. Before you do that, you can access your invoice um, by clicking on this icon. And then you'll see that it will generate an invoice for you. Um, with the total amount that you need to pay, and then with all of your details, including banking details, on the invoice as well. Or you can pay now and click here, and it will direct you to the payment page where you can fill in all of your information and pay online. So I think that's the gist of it. Oh, you can go back to your dashboard um, once you've checked out. Um, once we've generated the invoice, you'll see that the ones that are um, completed, once everything is green, you will have to finalize the entries so that they finalize on our system and we can receive um, all of the media. So once you finalize, you will no longer be able to edit any of the information. That means your entry is complete and you are happy to submit for judging. So once that is the case, um, you'll see it says finalize, then you can finalize those entries and they will submit into our system. If it still is marked in red and says incomplete, that means something is still outstanding that you need to complete. And then once it's all completed, it will this entry status will change to complete. And that means that you have submitted successfully for judging. I think that's that's my part done, P. Thank you. Amazing. Thank Amazing. you so much, Billy. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for taking us through the process. Uh, Pritesh, while um, Mkuli was going through, some questions were coming up, and uh, I'm just going to read them from the chat box. There's uh, something from Derek. He says, for some categories like campaign of the year, where you have quite a number of touch points you want to showcase, would you advise a summarized version of the submission, then enter the different touch points in the different categories like TV, radio, innovation, ETC. So his question is, would you advise a summarized version for the submission, then enter the different touch points? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question, so I'm gonna, I'll respond best the way that I can understand. So what you do is in, in categories like campaign of the year, what you could do is you could have the overall case study that basically shows um, how the various, again, the various executions, whether it was on TV or radio or any of those, have actually contributed. Could, could, could you stop maybe sh sharing if possible? Yeah, and then yes. it would be a lot easier than that. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you actually do a case study that basically shows how overall there was a coherent um, campaign that was basically put together that makes an absolute difference. And then what happens is as you enter the other categories, such as TV or radio, you have to then be very specific to explain in those categories how television was the hero and how television made a difference. Sometimes, depending on the campaign, you may be able to utilize the same case study um, because I know it's a bit challenging and case studies are very expensive. But if if you do have specific case studies to show how it made a difference on television, 
Then you share the television case study separately, radio case study separately, innovation separately. And then what you do is you then do an overview, an overarching view of the overall campaign that you'll then be able to share um, in the in the campaign of the year category. All right, Derek, I, I hope your question was answered and uh, that was clear for you. In case you did not get it, it's okay. Feel free to put your hand up and we'll give you an opportunity. Yes. Yes. Then um, there's another question from Peter. He says impact by media coverage, talkability versus impact by lives touched positively. Which of the two campaigns would stand a higher chance of winning a silverback? Yeah, I don't think it necessarily depends on one being stronger than the other. What you're really looking for is true impact to genuinely prove that there's impact. Obviously, media coverage is great because media coverage is able to highlight that there's talkability and then that ultimately that it's been impacting people, sorry, that people are seeing seeing the campaign out there itself. But ultimately, what we are looking for and what we need to make sure is that as we go through this and as the judges are reviewing it, are they seeing, and this is a very simple question you need to under, to, to answer for the judges, the work that has been done, has it actually gone to a point where it's added value for the consumer and added value for the brand. And if you can prove this, then ultimately, whether you're showing this via media coverage or whether you're showing it in terms of impact to individuals live, it's just a different way of proving exactly the same point. Right, thank you very much. I think that pretty much answers uh, Peter. Um, is there anyone else with a question that maybe you would love to uh, just come and ask your question directly to Pritesh? Yeah, and you're welcome to turn your mic on and ask it if you need to. And I think the key thing here is yeah. this is a safe space. It's a learning space. What we want to do is make sure that we give you the best tools possible to be able to enter and win at the Silverback Awards. Um, Derek? Yes, uh, go ahead, Derek. We can hear just you. Um, I just, I just really want to be sure I've gotten what I was asking. So like, let's say in campaign of the year, so you did this, you had this problem solving it, and yes. you came up let's say, with a TVC or radio. In the submission for campaign of the year, do, I, ideally what I thought you'd do is like, when you come in and say, oh, then we went forward with a viral TV, do we put the TV in that case study? Because what I'm looking at is like, if you're putting the different touch points as they played on live media, I'm concerned about the length of the submission video. Does it uh. matter? that it should be like, how in-depth should we go? Because I'd want to show that the TV was fun. Then I'd want to show that the radio was impactful and catchy. Then I'd want to show different things. Should I make, should I put those actual TVs and radios in that campaign submission? Or would it be better to give an overview of the campaign of the year in terms of problem, how we went about execution in the different touch points, and then uh, impact? And then these other... Uh, time-consuming entries that you'd have wanted to include there, then you include in those separate um, categories as individual projects. Amazing. So yeah, in that case, for campaign of the year, what you can do is upload the individual executions. It's so important for the judges to actually see the work and understand the work. So if you do a, just a summary of the work when you're entering it, the judges are not going to get a full understanding of what you actually did. So in, in that kind of case, what you can do, where it's a campaign category, you can upload multiple pieces and the system will allow you to basically upload the media so that the judges can review it. So that's not an issue. So you shouldn't stress about that. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Is there anyone else with a question? Please do feel free. Turn on your mic and just um, ask that question, that binding question that will you know will help you win these awards, please do feel free and the chats are also open. Um, in the meantime, Pritesh, um, just again to call out maybe the key things, yeah, uh, the key things that people would need to pay attention to when they are submitting their work, especially for those with uh, several marketing campaigns. You find that you have this whole lot of campaigns that you've done for a whole year, and you want to pick that one that you know is going to win uh, the silver work. What are the key things 
just to re echo maybe for those that came in later on as we were already ahead, what are those key things that they need to focus on for a category submission? Yeah, as I said, you know, if you've got multiple campaigns and you're looking at entering it, enter them all. You shouldn't just limit it and say, yes, one campaign and I'm going to put all my effort behind one. If you're doing good work and your work is backed by really, really strong ideas, then what you should be doing is putting it into the Silverback Awards and actually entering it as well. So don't limit yourself by saying, let me sit down and review and we'll only enter certain work. If you can, if you can actually have the bandwidth and the funds to be able to do it, enter as many categories as you can. And just to highlight in terms of the advice that I gave earlier, what you've got to do is you've got to actually focus on making sure that you articulate the problem as strongly as you can, and then articulate how you actually came out and solved that issue, then give a further explanation in terms of how, how you actually executed that solution itself and ultimately share the results that are happening. So that's the important thing that you need to actually keep in mind as you make your submissions available. Thank you so much, Pritesh. Um, uh, once again, uh, if you need any clarity in terms when you are registering and would like to get more information, please do feel free to uh, email silverback at lawyers.com. They'll be readily available to respond to any queries that you would be having when it comes to registration and and that. Yes. Um, we're almost coming to that time when you come to the end of the webinar. But then um, before we even go any further, maybe Pritesh, just um, feel, um, give us your last remarks and um, any special or any direct message that you'd love to give the people before um, we finish the call. Yeah, I think my most important thing to highlight is what a fantastic opportunity all of you have right now because you know, uh, as as Mercy and I were chatting earlier, for those of you who caught it, the Silverback Awards are on a trajectory where it's going to grow and become even bigger and more massive, um, and something that lots of people are looking at, looking at from across the African continent and across the world. You're at a point where in these early days, you get the opportunity to say you're one of the first agencies, one of the first brands to participate in the Silverback Awards and to win one. That's priceless. So don't lose this opportunity to be one of those pioneer agencies, those pioneer brands who are part of this process. Because when you are part of this process, you're getting great knowledge in terms of how you're performing. You're getting great understanding in terms of what you should be doing in the following years. And ultimately, the learnings that will come out of entering the Silverback Awards is going to make you stronger agencies and stronger brands, which ultimately allows you to be able to better serve the consumers across Uganda and across the entry area itself. So please enter, be part of the process. You're going to get such good value out of it. Thank you so much. Once again, guys, uh, the awards are organized by Uganda Advertising Association in partnership with Uganda Marketers Society. And all they want is for everyone to submit, to just win an award. Yeah, submit in your campaigns and win these awards. And for, um, yes, Nkoli has put the email into the chat box. So feel free to get it from there in case you did not hear. Silverback at lawyers.com for any inquiries. Uh, right at this moment, I would love to invite uh, Frank to just uh, give us a word as we move forward. Frank, please feel free to come in. Ah, thank you very much. Um, British, amazing presentation. Um, Marthy, thank you for moderating. And Kuli, thank you for the walkthrough. Um, like we, we told guys, um, I think Uganda Advertising Association um, and the Ugandan, uh, should I say, uh, marketing and advertising industry will not be the same again. And um, I think through this uh, walkthrough, by now you've realized that, you know, we're upping our standards. Uh, the idea is for every agency in Uganda, in Uganda Advertising Association, to be able to compete uh, globally. And, um, and I mean, we're, we're on that journey. Uh, just a few things maybe I needed to uh, highlight on top of what uh, Pritesh has also said. There will be, should I say three categories? So there is the advertising categories where we will need, uh, you know, as an agency, you can enter. Then the other side is uh, the marketing side. 
So I have seen a lot of agencies uh, uh, in this uh, webinar, in this uh, training, encourage your clients um, to participate. So they also have, um, they also have um, their categories. Then we also have the individual awards. Now, unlike last year where the individual awards were being paid for and stuff like that, um, this year, when the client, I mean, so on the advertising side, you used to where you have to put credits. The creative director worked on this piece. The act, uh, act director, ATC, ATC. Please uh, fill those uh, fill those blank um, parts. And also, clients also have the same. Then the Luris system has a way of um, doing its own computation and and is able to put weighted. And then finally, the the system will be able to say, okay, who is the creative director of the year? who is the art director of the year, who is the brand manager of the year, etc, etc. So uh, do, not, um, uh, do not leave those things uh, uh, with too many blanks. Uh, the other thing that you've also seen uh, from just the walkthrough is that last year there was a lot of writing. And I think uh, there were like a few agencies actually that did case study videos. Eh? So this time around, uh, every agency has to make a case study video or what Putation is calling the overview video. Um, that's the direction now we need to go because global awards, that's how things are submitted. Um, so there's that, including a, a case board. Uh, so you've seen that. That's why the, um, that's why the, um, the duration for the awards, you know, we opened on the 15th of August and it's going to end on the 30th of September. That's for Alibad. And for Alibad, you're paying 250. Then from 1st October to 13th October, that's like uh, the late submission period. That's exactly like uh, 13 days. You know, uh, the prices uh, go up and you have to pay 350. So take advantage on the early, the, the Alibad window um, and then make sure that your case studies are good. So thank you very much, uh, Pritesh. Thank you very much, the Luris team. Um, Nicole, thank you. I want to also thank CoCreate for creating our, you know, the, the landing page, the website that we've done. And thank you very much, um, Marcy, for, for this. God bless. Wish you guys a lovely week. Thanks, Frank. Right. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Uh, in case, like we said, in case of any inquiries, silverback at lores.com will be ready to answer any questions. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. And I hope you have all picked up something. And uh, all the best. All right. Bye. Thank you so much, Thank you, Frank. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right.